Hi, welcome. So I'd like to pick up where we left off last time. So what we have done so far is we've written a proper controller uh, which is able to invoke a proper view. However, the part which is missing now is the model aspect. So the first step is basically, well, let's define what we want to have as a behavior uh, in our controller. So if we look at where we left the controller off, we had the index method in our home controller where we would like to be able to call models using this model, then item, um, and get to get the list of all items, and then to get them to display here in our view. So what we're gonna do uh, first is we are going to write the model class for item, and that's gonna be done in the models here. So let's make a new file and save it as item.php. Um, so we start the file with the open and we end it with the closing class item and we'd like to have a declaration of an attribute here and name is the attribute we were using in our view so if we look at our view again I believe no this is not the view the view is home index we're trying to get the name of the item this is the part we care about so our item uh, class has to have a name attribute and we need a public function get uh, for which the role is going to be to basically run a command We'd like to have it do something like SQL, which would look like select star from item, the item table. So this, this is what we'd be trying to accomplish here. Okay, so but before we can do any of this, we, we need to actually connect to a database. And this is why we are going to write the model uh, base class. So in our core folder, we need to add a new file, uh, which this class here would extend, right? So we need to have the class item. Sorry, I just can't bear the lowercase i. Let's put a capital I. Uh, we want to have it to extend the model class. This is what we'd like to accomplish here and have the model class uh, perform all of the connection stuff to the database. So let's make a new file in core. Let's save it as model.php. All right. And this class model, what we want it to do is we need it to hold on to a connection, a database connection. So in this case, we want to have a protected static attribute so I like to call it connection and set it to null so why are we setting it to uh, why are we making this a static uh, variable because we need for this variable to be shared among all of the model uh, classes no matter how many there are we need to have only one connection for all of our model objects throughout all of the classes, which will derive from this model class. All right, now let's write a function, a public function rather. The constructor. And we want to basically initialize the connection. So if self connection is null then we want to initialize it what we want to accomplish is in the end self connection is equal to new PDO we want to make a new PDO object we're going to use a PHP data objects to connect to the 
database and we're going to use a connection string for this my sql colon host is equal to host so i'm placing a variable here and db name is equal to db name a variable again followed by user for the username to connect to the database and password so we need to define these parameters which is what we're going to do now so the first one being host and that's likely to be localhost if the script is connecting to the same computer uh, for the database and db name uh, for this example we are going to use test which is a database by default uh, created by default in the XAMPP uh, version of MySQL uh, we're gonna set the user to be equal to root and the password to be empty so all of you who have played around with XAMPP already are familiar with this and these settings need to be modified um, so we'll see how to do that in a later video great so this seems like it should work um, we have a static connection and we check if it's null uh, if it is null then we basically make it such that it's not null anymore and so we don't need to have more connections great so now our item um, our item class what we want to do here is we'd like to um, make it acts as a database well, it's not going to be possible yet because it's not visible. So just one thing that we want to do before we jump right to this uh, item class and make it extend model is we'd like to actually include model in our dependencies. So we'll just require once core model.php. And now back to our item.php. We want to use the connection to prepare a statement. We want to use prepared statements always to make sure we avoid SQL injection. So the statement is going to be self connection arrow prepare arrow prepare the SQL statement that's the first thing we want to do and then we want to run the statement we execute it with whatever parameters would be required in the statement itself in this case there are none there are no placeholders and now we want to set the fetch mode to PDO uh, fetch class. And we want to set the class to be of class item. Great. Now, the only thing that's left, if we're going to return all of the records from this table, is to return the statements fetch all. So there's two statements we can use, fetch or fetch all. Fetch all returns an array, and fetch returns a single record. So in this case, I, when I write the function get, I want to get the collection of all the records that are in the table. So that's what I do. So this is getting me all the records in the table and returning these. All right. So I have the model which connects to the database. I have the item model here 
which gets the data and I have the home controller which makes use of this and then sends that data to the view. We'll save that. You know, we need to have a table to use in our database. So I'm going to go back to my exam control panel and click on admin here to bring up the PHP admin. Um, so with PHP admin, you can manage your database. And in this example, I'm using the test database. So what I want to do is I want to create a new uh, database. In this case, I just need to have two columns and the name of this is item. I'll click go. Item ID will be my primary key. I set this to be an auto increment key. Name varchar 50. So varchar is a variable length string and I want it to have a maximum length of 50. Once you have all of this entered, you can click on save. And now you have a table that has two items. It would be nice to populate this table a little bit for with test data. So we click on insert and we'll put some milk and cookies as data. Click go. And there you go. We have two rows inserted. We validate this here with milk and cookies. Awesome. So if I run this, I would expect to get milk and cookies in my item list. I'm not going to run it yet. So here is the set of items that I'm getting with the get method, which is the collection of all items of this type, so getting it from the item class as get. And it should get me all of the items from that table. And there you go. My item list now is milk and cookies. Now the next part, the next improvement would be to be able to perform other functions. And this is what we're going to address in a uh, following video uh, where we will perform more create, read, update and delete operations on this item table. So thank you very much for watching and have a good day.